ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू शेष महाराजू द ब्रदर ऑफ भगवान रिकॉर्ड्स द स्ट्रेंज हैपनिंग्स दैट प्रिसीडेड द डिक्लेरेशन ही वुड रिकॉल दिस वे ए चेंज केम ओवर एज सून एज वी रिटर्न फ्रॉम हम्पी वेन थ्रोइंग अवे द बुक्स राजू सेड that boy indeed is myself i myself am that boy word was sent to the school running home i was astounded at seeing him there was a striking brilliance in his face i asked how long will you remain a boy he replied till maya arrives i could not make out what he said through signs i understood mother was meant we sent word and summoned her for the three days it took for the parents to arrive he had no meals or anything no food at all nor did he utter a word meanwhile the parents arrived he wanted mother to serve food and bring some water he washed their feet mixing rice tamarind soup pickles and chutney all together and sprinkling holy water on it he had mother served three morsels and added maya is got out of the way as he was uttering these words a bright light flashed and creeping on to the wall behind departed that was a narration of the happenings before he declared himself as an avatar now sheshmarazu went on to add two strange though unverifiable details Razu had earlier given him a 10 rupee note a big amount in those days for purposes of worship he had seen it himself moving about on its own Nasimudas and Suburatnamma would also recall the happenings of those momentous days together they give a credible account Suburatnamma would say by the time satyam came back from the hospital visit i had a younger sister he took her and said you two fell in the maya then he named her sai prabha he showed us the gold collar pin presented by the ballari municipal chairman das narsimha murthy and i heard the school bell we followed satyam to the school as soon as we entered the school compound he showed us the collar pin again and said it was a nice ornament for his collar we heard the second bell nasimurti and satyam went to their class i went to my class and my brother went to his class sri sheshmaraj garu was my class teacher and he was teaching till within 10 minutes i tell you satyam left his classroom and came to my class crying and told sri sheshmaraj i have lost my collar pin Shashmaraz got angry and said, "Don't tell me anything. Go and tell your sister-in-law." Sachem did not speak further, but walked out. He went to his classroom and took up his books. When our friend Narsimha Murthy asked him what had happened and where he was going, he said, "Everything is Maya," and walked out of the class. Father told me that when he noticed him outside the school. he saw a lot of brilliant light around him father spoke to him satyam then went to his brother's house threw down his books and said that he did not want to go to school we are told that he sat at a corner of the house he did not talk much he was only uttering everything is maya everything is maya slowly people started to come in he did not say anything someone sent a word for sashmaraju but he could not extract anything from sachem or understand his state of consciousness somebody rushed out to call my father he came and partially recognizing sachem's divinity said he is not sachem he is sai baba himself and prostrated before him he said sachem you said that you would not come for lunch all the children are hungry and are waiting Sachem immediately got up and said, "Let's go." All this time, 
we were at school and then we heard about Satyam during lunch time. We all ran to his house. When Satyam got up and walked out, we could not follow him as he walked very fast. Well, these are the things, you know, that Satyamur also mentioned. And Narsimha Das and Subhurat Nama mentioned. But what more things wonder us than this? Wonderful. Narsimha Das adds, My mother had just delivered a baby girl, but he asked her, Where is the boy? My mother, thinking that they were referring to me, said, My dear Satyam, Dasu has not yet returned from school. Then Swami asked in deep tone, No, where is your boy? My father, who was nearby, came running and said, Satyam, my dear child, what is the matter? Immediately Satyam said, I am not Satyam, I am Baba. I have to live for Vishwashanti, welfare of mankind. Allow me to do my work. Hearing these words, my father was stunned and noticing the bright illumination surrounding his form, he prostrated at his feet. My father, with unshaken devotion for Sai Baba, spread a tiger skin on the rough stone in front of our house. This is the narration of Narsimha Das. Das further remembers that Raju sat quietly on the stone. After ten minutes, my father asked him, Are you ready for lunch? He immediately got up and had a few morsels of food, which my mother gave, and was completely immersed in himself for two full days. Subharat Nama continues, We started a bhajan and puja with incense, offerings. He did not get up. My father put a velvet pillow on his head. At Arati, he opened his eyes, which had turned red. He said, I want to go to Puttaparthi. Masimadas completes the account thus. He got up and wanted to go to his brother's house. My father requested him, you should be my guest for lunch before you leave for Puttaparthi. He agreed before returning to Sheshamarazu's. Two or three days later, his parents and other relatives arrived. Sometime during the day following the momentous one, when not many people were around, Iswarama and Sheshamarazu approached Baba. Iswarama pleaded, We are in Maya, we are Maya, but you are free from Maya, and we will not interfere, we will not argue. You can be whatever you are but not in the Himalayas, not in the caves and hills, not away from us. Give me your word that you remain in Puttaparthi. Let your devotees come there. We we'll welcome them gladly and treat them kindly. Baba agreed, I have chosen Puttaparthi as my Kshetra. He announced that the boon is granted not to you, but to the village, the world itself. I shall leave this place and come there to Puttaparthi on Thursday. He further promised not to wear the ascetic's ochre robes for some time. Isarama was greatly pleased. She would at least be near her son at all times. Her happiness turned to embarrassment when Pandit Narayan Shastri came and touched her feet. Swami's mother, he said, Swami's mother. One day, Soon after the declaration, an elderly lady approached the young Baba in the midst of this entire hubbub. Baba beckoned her to come close near him. Then in Hindi, less heard in those parts, Baba said, My child, at last you have arrived. To the stranger, it was a gush of old memories. Nothing much has changed. The voice and the tone were the same only the face looked younger. She remembered the time two decades ago when she had spoken to Sai Baba of Shirdi. Everything was the same except in the face. The lady had been born the daughter of a Shirdi devotee who was a collector in the Nizam's dominion. Baba himself had named her Sarada. She married early and lost all her four children on one of her many visits to Shirdi Sai, whom she had been visiting from the age of three, she sought 
the boon of spiritual liberation from Baba. He made her promise upon oath that she would not reveal it to anyone until the time came and then he made the historical declaration to her, I will be reborn in Andhra and you will then stay with me forever. That was in 1917, a year before Sai Baba of Shirdi left his body. She later set up an orphanage called Sai Sar. During one of her fundraising campaigns, when she was camping somewhere near Orokonda, she heard of Razu, a boy who claimed he was Sai Baba of Shirdi, come again. She was determined to see him. Her mind was at peace when the young boy spoke to her in Hindi. That was not all. The young Baba stretched out his hand and asked, Let me have the balance of 16 rupees you owe me. Balance? 16 rupees? The lady was puzzled. Yes, indeed. Don't you remember saving for the Dasara celebration festivities at Shirdi? You lent 40 rupees? Out of it, once to Balaram, remember? You sent only that sum for the celebrations. The balance due to me is 16 rupees. It is not simple arithmetic. Oh my God! The lady exclaimed. Who could ever remember such a trivial thing, even after such a long time, except Baba? I don't need your money. Is only to assure you and reassure you of my Shirdi identity that I recall this. Besides this, it is to build your trust in me, which you still lack. No wonder you sat by me without touching my feet. In years to come, Sharada would come to me later, known as Sharadamma, Shirdi Amma and Taddabhottu. Why? Because of that big dot on the forehead. She would leave her Sai Sadhan and come to settle down at Puttaparthi, where she would remain until her death on Christmas Day, 1986. B.V. Narasimha Swami, who wrote the life of Shirdi Sai Baba in detail and established Sai Samaj in Madras, went to see this boy who claimed himself to be Sai Baba. He said to Sakshamarazu, Though we do prachar, propagation of Sai Baba, we have not been as effective as this boy in spreading the name of Sai Baba. Whether he is an incarnation or not of Sai Baba, only time will tell. You would also write about it in Sai Sudha magazine, the official organ of Shirdi Sai Samaj. Later, when Baba would visit Hamalapuram after the declaration, Boya Party Venkata Subbaya, a classmate of his school days at Kamalapuram, would ask him what gave him his spiritual powers. Baba would put him off in a lighter way by giving a quizzical reply. One day Shri Baba appeared to me and put five items of food on a golden plate. After eating that food, I obtained this power. Anjaneelu had taken a very significant step by inviting Baba to sit on Sai Baba Gundu. Gundu here meaning boulder. He made it clear that for him both Razu and Sai Baba Shirdi were one and the same. The spontaneous recognition can be indulgently compared to Mahal Sapati spontaneously calling Sai Baba a Shirdi Ya Sai. Ya Sai, welcome Sai, thus recognizing who he actually was. In that respect, Anjaneelu was the first devotee of the Sai Baba reborn. Years later, Baba was to say that Anjaneelu was the first person to recognize him as Sai Baba. We'll continue in the next session. Hope you are enjoying all these details relating to his childhood. And in this brief talk, I could bring to your narration how Sarada or Paddavottu or Saradamma, who followed Shirdi Baba, who was with Shirdi Baba for some time, joined such a Baba, have recognized that both are same, and spent the remaining part of our life and be their last. We'll meet 
in the next session. Thank you for your time.